Hello and welcome to Hopes Point Baptist Church Midweek Minute. Uh, this coming Sunday, we'll continue Brother Edmore's series on Pentecost and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers uh, and the church and what that means. And I'm looking forward to bringing a message in that series uh, to team up with him. But today, just lay a little preface to that. Looking at the uh, often overlooked connection of the work of the Holy Spirit in and through the life of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, it's always a mystery to us to figure out how the Trinity can be three in one, one in three, all equal, all unique, all working separately yet in sync with one another, but uh, God is perfectly able to do that. And there's some great lessons and applications to our lives uh, as a result that we'll get into a little bit later on. But I go back to Matthew chapter three and verse 11, and Jesus has come to John the Baptist to follow uh, his father's will of obedience and submission to him uh, through baptism. And it says, I, uh, speaking of John the Baptist, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and uh, I cannot even, I, I, I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals. Uh, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, many make that into a great mysterious thing, but we'll find in Acts chapter 2, that this is historically fulfilled uh, as the early church has been gathered and assembled by Jesus and commissioned to go out. And as they were waiting in prayer and in unity with one another, the Holy Spirit of God came upon them in power. We'll look at that and again in a moment. And then Jesus came from Galilee to John the Baptist at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me. I understand uh, where John the Baptist would be coming from there. But Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be so for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he had allowed him. And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, some who do not believe in the Trinity often try to make it out that the scriptures never teach the Trinity. Well, here you have Jesus Christ, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit and God the Father all on scene and actively engaged with one another. So. There it is, all right? But it goes on to say uh, in, in the rest of this chapter, uh, or the next chapter, 4, verse 1, that Jesus was then led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, understand this. His obedience, his submission to God the Father was preparatory for his... Uh, for his uh, confrontation of the devil himself, the spiritual warfare that would take place. And, and certainly the scriptures teach that we submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. That's found in James chapter four. But here Jesus is showing us the great pattern for us of submission and obedience to God the Father, dependence upon him when we uh, take on uh, the devil and spiritual warfare. And uh, then, of course, we reference this again in Mark chapter 1 and verse 9. And it says, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven saying, You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Verse 12, and immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. Now, it sounds like the Spirit is just pushing Jesus against his will. But certainly in the original language, it meant that he was sent out, uh, commissioned and led to go out in the Spirit, which we cross-reference uh, now in the final reference to this in Luke chapter 3 and verse 21. 
And when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, you are my beloved son and in you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself began his ministry. Now notice this, the, the obedience, the submission, uh, the, the, the pleasing of God the Father, and uh, then he goes on mi uh, ministry, and uh, that, that's a pattern for you and I. And as we go out doing ministry, serving the Lord, uh, so winning, whatever we engage in uh, for the Lord, we always go out from the strength of that which he is doing within us as a result of our submission and our obedience to him. Then in chapter four, verse one, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now we'll not get into this confrontation with the devil here, but understand and realize how key it was that the Spirit of God and Jesus were working in sync with one another. And uh, so as we look at this, we recognize that uh, when we uh, uh, go about serving the Lord, we need to understand that, that our heart attitude has to be like Jesus. I, he said in John 6, 38, I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of him who has sent me. Then he said in John 8, 29, he who, who sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. So as Jesus was walking in perfect harmony, perfect fellowship with the Father, being led by the Spirit uh, and being filled with the Spirit, then Jesus, uh, of course, was able to engage all the spiritual forces of evil and arise victorious, and then, of course, live a perfect life here upon this earth. So as we look at this, we recognize in preparation for the sermon this Sunday how important it is for you and I both First of all, to be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 says, be filled with the Spirit. And that means uh, to be under the control, to be in submission to. Uh, an old Greek way of illustrating it uh, would be like a, a boat with a sail. And then the wind uh, coming into that sail and giving it power to move forward. And then with the adjustments of that sail, give direction. I think it's a beautiful illustration. But what follows uh, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18 through chapter 6 is the results of being filled and under that control and empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it, it makes a huge difference in our personal walk with God. Then it carries over to our marriage. Then it carries over to our relationships within our family. And then in the workplace. And then, of course, doing spiritual warfare with the devil and then carrying out the great commission of Jesus Christ. So understand the importance of being filled and led by the Spirit of God. And of course, Galatians closes with walk in the Spirit that you'll not fulfill the lust thereof. So I just want you to know that Jesus has left us a very beautiful pattern of what it means to be filled with the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, to be used by the Spirit, to not only be victorious in our own lives, but to make an impact on the world around us for Jesus Christ. God bless you and have a great rest of the week in Jesus. Amen.